be seated. At this time, I'd like to ask everyone to please put their phones on silent. Dear family and friends, we are gathered here in the presence of God for the purpose of joining this man and this woman in marriage, which is a sacred gift created by God and blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ, and is to be held high in honor among all people. So let's reverently remember that God has established and sanctified marriage for the welfare and happiness of mankind. And in, it is into this covenant bond that John and Jessica are now entering to be joined together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the family and friends that have gathered here to witness and celebrate this sacred occasion. As John and Jessica stand here to be united in marriage, we ask for your presence and blessing in this ceremony and in their life together. We also ask that this ceremony may be a testimony of John and Jessica's love for each other and of your love for them. Lord, would you cause this moment to remain with them throughout their lives, not just as a memory of a celebration event, but also as a reminder of their lifelong covenant to each other. We ask these things in Jesus' name. At this time, uh, Ivan Fung will be leading us in a time of worship, and you can find the lyrics in your program on the back, uh, and if you can join along, that would be great. mountains and the sea your river runs with love for me and i will open up my heart and let the healer set me free i'm happy to be in the truth and i will daily lift my hands for i will always sing of when your love came down i could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. The mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. 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 Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness, I know. But when the world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. I could sing of your love forever. 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 The mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. And now I'll read out of uh, the scripture reading today, which comes from the Bible in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, 
humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. John and Jessica, a wedding is a beautiful event. There is nothing quite like it. It's the time to declare and celebrate your love for each other. Once engagement takes place, life begins to revolve around wedding plans and preparations. Increasingly, there are decisions to be made, people to be contacted, and the things to do list becomes longer and longer. You've made all these preparations in order to make your wedding day special. And during this COVID season, you had to do things twice and make lots of compromises. But now the time has come for you to celebrate, to declare your vows, and celebrate your love for each other on this special day. What you are about to do now is nothing new. What I mean is that many have traveled down this path of entering into marriage before you, and many more will come after you. Time and time again, men and women have fallen in love and have chosen to commit to one another by getting married. This special day will go by quickly and become a distant memory. So make sure to capture and enjoy this moment. But keep this in mind. Years from now, when you reflect back to this moment, you will have gathered a whole collection of other moments that will color the way that you remember this moment. You have put a lot of work into making this day special, but so much more work is needed by you to keep this day special all the days of your life. We just read from the Bible, Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. This scripture passage is talking about putting on love. Putting on love. To put on love as you would put on clothes. To wrap, your clo- to wrap or clothe yourself in love. You might feel that this would be natural and easy to do because of the way that you feel about each other. But as I said to you earlier, so many have traveled down the path of entering into marriage before you. And here is the reality. Many have not learned to wrap themselves in love. So I am praying that this passage becomes for you a special reminder and call to truly wrap your marriage in love all the days of your life. And that by doing doing so, you will cherish today this moment all the days. And so I will share from the scripture reading three things, the A, B, and C's that you need to take to heart as you build your life together in marriage. So A, atmosphere. Okay, easy to remember, A, atmosphere. An atmosphere will, will grow in your marriage whether you put effort into it or not. I'm not talking about the atmosphere surrounding special celebrations, such as when you celebrate your birthdays and family and uh, families and friends with families and friends, or the atmosphere when planning for a big vacation that's coming up, or even the atmosphere of when you purchase a new home together or bring a new life into the world. The atmosphere during these moments are fun and exciting. But the atmosphere from these moments leave as quickly as they come. And they do not have the power to keep you cherishing all the days of your life, the vows that you are making today. The atmosphere I'm talking about that will grow whether you put effort into it or not is the atmosphere of everyday life. Now, I said it will grow whether you put effort into it or not, but this does not mean that I'm suggesting that it is pointless in putting effort into it. On the contrary, I'm saying it will grow no matter what. So you can't risk not putting effort I'm saying you must put effort into it and be intentional about what it grows into. John and Jessica, this scripture passage is calling you into a life marked by these virtues. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. 
John, you must extend compassion when you're having trouble understanding Jessica. Jessica, you must extend kindness when things don't seem fair. John, you must show humility when you think you're right. Jessica, you must show gentleness when you feel angry. And John, you must be patient when you're feeling frustrated. John and Jessica, you are to daily respond to each other in these ways when it's challenging to do so in the mundane moments of everyday life. Unfortunately, so many of us have bought into the romanticized notion that if we just put special attention on the big moments of our lives, it will go well with us. Focusing on the big moments will give you photos and things to post on social media. But focusing on the little moments will give you a healthy and loving marriage. Taking a closer look at these virtues, you will see that they are all about putting the other person first. They reflect Jesus who laid down his life for us. So build a marriage where these virtues are built into the way that you look at one another, the way that you speak to one another, and the way that you treat one another. B. Bear with each other and forgive one another. The idea of bearing may paint a picture of an unhappy person who takes on abuse and says, whatever, whatever, it's fine. A person like this grows in resentment and bitterness and feels sorry for himself or herself, while the other person unknowingly continues to heap abuse upon the bearer. This is not what this is called for. This is not what love is. Rather, in love, the act of bearing must go hand in hand with the act of forgiving. The model, again, we have of bearing and forgiving is Jesus, who bore our sins on the cross and forgives us our sins. He did this so that we who have been alienated from him might be reconciled to him. That we can have freedom from guilt and condemnation so that our relationship with him would be restored. This is what love is. In your marriage, you will disappoint and hurt one another. It will happen. Even if you never intend to, we're broken people. But if those hurts are not forgiven, the lack of forgiveness will drive a wedge between you. And it will split you further and further away. So John, make it a priority to forgive Jessica. Not if she disappoints or hurts you, but when she does. And Jessica, make it a priority to forgive John. Again, not if he disappoints you or hurts you, but when he does. This is the kind of love we have been given through Jesus Christ. You don't want your marriage to build layers of resentment and bitterness, guilt and condemnation, creating distance between you two over time. But this can easily happen if we don't follow the way of Christ and again, bear with each other and forgive one another as Jesus did for us. C. Chosen. Often people focus on their own choices that they make in life. When things go well, they pat themselves on the back for making the right choices. When things become difficult, they question the choices that they have made. But the focus here is not on your choice, but on God's choice. In getting married, you should not celebrate your choice to marry each other. Rather, celebrate that you have both been chosen by God. John and Jessica, I know that you both acknowledge God's hand in bringing you together. This is a good place to begin. But your acknowledgement should not stop there. God has not only brought you together, but he has chosen you both in order to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus, so that he might work through you. His bringing you together is not an end in itself. He has brought you together for more. 
For that reason, John, you must pray and support Jessica to become all that God has chosen her to become. God created Jessica for a purpose and has moved in her life and has shaped her up until now. I believe that part of that shaping was to prepare her for you. But it doesn't end there. There is more shaping and more molding He wants to do in her. And now God will use you, John, in the work He will continue to do in Jessica's life for His purposes. She has been chosen by the Lord. Jessica, for that very same reason, you must also pray and support John to become all that God has chosen John to become. God has been working in John's life to make him the man he is today. But God wants to do so much more. When you sense changes in John that are initiated by God, encourage him. Build him up to press deeper into the Lord. Help him to discover all that God has purposed and planned for him. Down the road, when you look back and remember today, I pray that you will realize that this day was not only about you two declaring your love for one another. I pray that you will realize that it was also about God taking both of you toward the next step in how He wants to work in and through you. And I pray that you will see that this day was also about God choosing you, both of you, to build up your spouse whom He has chosen and dearly loved. John and Jessica, may the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. And now we come to the pledges and vows. John, do you take Jessica to be your, wet, to be your wedded wife to live together in the covenant of marriage in accordance with the will of God and... Do you promise to love her, honor her, comfort her, and stand by her in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, in hardship and in ease, forsaking all others, to be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I do. And Jessica, do you take John to be your wedded husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage in accordance with the will of God, and do you promise to love him, honor him, comfort him, stand by him in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, in hardship and in ease, forsaking all others, to be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I do. Thank you. Please face, turn and face one another. Now, John and Jessica have prepared their own vows to each other, which they will now make. <laughs> Jessica, my love, my beloved, beginning today, I get to call you my wife. I turn to God to empower me to be a husband worthy of your love. I vow to take your hand and be gentle. I will hold you close when you feel cold. I will protect you from all your fears. I wrote this on a napkin so I can dry your tears. I vow, to, I vow to always love you. I, John, take you, Jessica, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish for as long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow.
champion. I love being weird and silly without judgment around you. Thank you for helping me see my weaknesses and showing me how I can grow. Today, we will be united in holy matrimony. I promise that I will try to be a patient, loving, and supportive wife to you. I will also try not to nag, but to listen and trust your judgment, even when I think my way is better. I promise to keep God in the center of our marriage and to honor you as my husband. From this day forward, we will walk together hand in hand. I, Jessica Chung, take you, John Tam, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish for as long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. The wedding ring is an unbroken circle. It is a symbol of eternity. It is an outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond of two hearts united in endless love. May these rings be a constant reminder of this sacred moment when you promise your love, your life to each other. John, as an expression of your love and of your deep desire to forever be united in heart and soul, please place the ring on Jessica's finger and repeat after me. Jessica, I give you this ring. Jessica, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. Jessica, to express the same love and desire, you may place the ring on John's finger and repeat after me. John, I give you this ring. John, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. John and Jessica, now that you have exchanged marriage vows, in the presence of God and these witnesses, and have sealed your vows in the exchanging of rings. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. Amen. John, you may now kiss your bride.
Let's pray. Father, thank you for being in John and Jessica's lives and for bringing them together in this holy union. Holy Spirit, we ask that you go before them and guide them as they build their marriage through joyous times and challenging times. Lord Jesus, grant them wisdom, patience, and an ever-maturing love for each other that reflects your love for us, which will shine as a testimony of your grace. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'd like to call up the father of the bride, Mr. Chung. Uh, he will come and share a few words. And now, on behalf of John and Jessica, I would like to kindly ask that everyone remain in their seats after the conclusion of the ceremony for group photos. John and Jessica, can I have you turn and face your family and friends? Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my privilege to introduce to you for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. John and Jessica Tam. <laughs> 